Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Hello everyone, welcome back to day three of theCUBE coverage in Las Vegas for ServiceNow Knowledge 15, hashtag no15. If you want to join the conversation with us, go to crowdchat.net slash no15. That's our new CrowdChat engagement application in real time. Lay down some questions in the threads, ask some questions, comment, participate, join the conversation. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angels, my coast. Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.com, uh, research analyst. Uh, Dave, uh, day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage where we're extracting the signal from the noise. A lot of good stuff here at ServiceNow. They're uh, obviously um, pumping on all cylinders. Frank, Dr. Frank Slootman, Fred Luddy, the founder, and their staff, and all the executives, and more importantly, a lot of their customers. And the customers up here are really, really jazzed. They're very happy, successful um, product, market fit, as they say. Um, the revenues are subscription, recurring, throwing off a lot of cash. Um, great stuff. What's your take, uh, and what do you expect, and what's your take so far in two days here? We've been immersed in the data. We've been immersed with the people. Uh, we had John Cleese on who threw water on me. I'm going to get him back. I'm going to get it back on the cube, throw water back on him. Um, kind of a fun bit, kind of a daily show. <laughs> you, too bad you didn't have a drink to throw on him. Yeah, yeah no, I was, I would, <laughs> I'm ready for him next we've time. Seen his, we've seen his moves before, but he's he still four, faked this out. He's got four million followers, so I think his mob will <laughs> attack me. Um, but seriously, day two is gone in the books, day three. Uh, we're going to talk to the COO uh, shortly, but what's your take so far? Well, you know, I said to uh, Beth White, the chief marketing officer of ServiceNow, she and Frank Slootman, were, her, their company was acquired by EMC. And I said, when I, when I first uh, talked to you guys, when you first came to EMC, EMC World was actually smaller than this show is now. And they're like, well, really? And we started thinking about it, and they said, yeah. It was like significantly smaller. So now this show is growing at like 50% a year. It's like growing roughly the same pace as its customer base. Actually, I think it's growing even faster. Yeah. I mean, this thing is exploding. Then Whoa. you saw last night at that event. I mean, that was impressive. <laughs> Very impressive event, great party. You but, were periscoping it. But here's the problem with ServiceNow, I see. They don't have two cubes. EMC has two cubes, so, <laughs> so Frank and Beth, Give if you're watching, um, you want to one-up EMC a world. Jeremy Burton, you got to get but two so, cubes. So, but I mean, you know, it, that, that's kind of fun, but it underscores the growth of this community. And the passion that the customers have. So I'm really excited about today. Dan McGee's coming on. He's the COO, um, and he's, he's the COO, he's the operations guy running the cloud, right? So he gave a lot of data this morning, and he gave us a glimpse last year at Knowledge 14 about some of that data, and I got really charged up about it, because as you know, David Floyer and I have done a lot of availability studies in our day. We worked with many, many CIOs to look at real availability. ServiceNow is the only company that actually tracks that. I know it's kind of inside mm -hmm. baseball yeah. and kind of boring, a lot of people's eyes glass over, but, here's, but we see these numbers, five nines, six nines, it's all a bunch of BS, okay? <laughs> it's what the user sees that matters. And so we, I'll tell you a story. We had a consulting uh, operation with CIOs, and we would go in and we would do these availability studies and we'd find out what their real availability was, what ServiceNow is now reporting. It was consistently in the 96, 95, 94%. And the CIOs, John, used to look at us and say, that number does not leave this room. So, they don't want it to get out there. Yeah. So, anyway, that's going to be an interesting conversation. We kind of geek out a little bit with, with Dan and you know, cloud inside baseball, but I think it's really worthwhile because a lot of people are concerned about putting their data in the cloud, and ServiceNow has yeah. a story around it, so. And I got some other questions too, some things I'm not clear on that I want to unpack. Yeah, I mean ServiceNow, obviously the investor confidence on Friday got rocked a little bit, so that was an issue. I think Frank Slootman addressed that uh, nicely, and uh, you know, they got I think that was a trees don't grow to the moon thing, though. I mean, it's just, you, can't, you know, no stock could just keep going up and up and up. Every quarter they beat, you know, it's like, what do you think about the, the, the long-term prospects of service. As now. an investor? Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you know, we talk to investors all the time on SiliconANGLE, private investors, VCs, and we also talk to a lot of public analysts who evaluate it. And, you know, I think, I personally think that there's not a lot of confidence in the, the new way that people are doing businesses from the investor community. I think there's a lot of darts being thrown at the board. I think there's a lot of, some understanding of the future scenario. I mean, I saw this with Twitter and Facebook when they launched. No one really understands this new world and being bold, and that was the theme we heard from ServiceNow's customers. And I think, if I'm an investor, I look at a couple things. One, 
the software is very good, right? So the software is phenomenal, Dave. You have a lot of happy customers using the software in a what looks like a niche in IT service management, but that, ex, that platform feature and the software quality is really the thing I would look at, number one, as a positive. Two, you look at the um, successful value enablement that they're, they're giving customers. They are allowing customers to do things that they've never done before in the application that's very cloud native. And what I mean by that is all the things you're hearing at ServiceNow, and this is an opportunity that investors have to squint through the, the, the noise, and that is, it's asynchronous, it's real time, it's mobile. They've done the things on the product side that position itself for the next 10 years. So I think one, that the software is really badass, it's really DevOps oriented, but it's not hard to use like a DevOps. Um, it's more, friendly for the enterprise. Their software is also enterprise grade, so that is really a big deal. With private instances, this opens up a developer community. They're bringing DevOps, Dave, to the enterprise without all the headaches of DevOps in terms of learning and being a, a, a total ninja, if you will, in coding. Sales. They have a sales machine that's badass, and they have a great customer base. They know how to sell. They know how to bring value to customers. They have great SE organization. Now they have the developer community, so the sales action's happening. And finally, three, the cloud infrastructure is the new normal. So I think this cloud-native, enterprise-grade confluence is a real strength. So as an investor, I look at that and I say, check, 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 and then I look at the market. Yeah, What's going that's on the, the last, that's the one thing I would add, right? Is and the, 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 they're the in market. a flywheel market, they're inside the tornado, as Jeffrey Moore would say, so you know, that all that cliche is true. They're in a shift and an inflection point, and we heard from you know, Stone Brewery, right? So, so again, great software, great futuristic capabilities in the DevOps mindset of synchronous, great sales action, great people, and again, the market's hot. So yeah, so the market, in the, mar in the market side, the TAM, when you and I published on Forbes, the new Sheriff in Town post that we published on Forbes, I think we were the first to take a stab at the TAM, maybe not the first, but the first that actually quantified it to that size. And we had it over, I think we had a 35 billion. ServiceNow, I think, pegs it at 45 billion. I, yeah. I can see it. With the platform play and the, and the store and the application development yeah. angle, I think it yeah. could get that large. And they're disrupting and innovating at the same time. The thing that I would have an open question for as an investor would be, um, one, to be critical, is what are they doing with the cash? Because are they hiding the ball with the cash? What are they investing? Hiding they the they're not hiding the ball with the oh. cash. They're pouring it back into the company. Well, you mentioned they could be more profitable. Well, no, they no. could, but they don't want to be. Well, I no, mean, but this is the Everybody wants again. to be, but they would rather put the money in, in, in growth, don't you think, than, than yeah. just squirrel it away. Well, no, I'm just saying if I was an investor, I think, oh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's right, a great right, opportunity. Right. I would buy service now, but as an investor, are they spending or are they investing? Yeah, so investors want them to buy stock back, but they don't have to at this point, yeah, but that's yeah. what kind of investors do. We see you know, put pressure put on EMC, we saw what happened to Dell, we saw you know, BMC go private. So, well, I asked, I asked Pat some of the valuation questions when he was on theCUBE about these startups, and what, what I'm seeing in Silicon Valley and some of these high flyers is they're spending money but not really investing. So I think that would be the question. I look at ServiceNow, they're investing in growth, they got you know, new office space, they have the cloud, they're building out the technology. We'll ask uh, the COO that question. Well, I think the other interesting thing is the collision course with, uh, with guys like Salesforce. I think that's real. And we had a very interesting conversation last night offline with some of the people in the development community who are starting to develop applications that are systems of record as opposed yeah. to systems of engagement. And their view is they can take on systems of record well, on top of service now. That was a really well, interesting discussion. Systems of engagement, systems of record. These are words we've used at the IBM event, right? So yeah, don't go to Salesforce, you got IBM right there. So when you get in that systems of engagement, that's very valuable data. And I think one of the things I like about service now that I think is genius, we asked Dave Wright, the chief strategy officer, the chessboard, the competitive strategy of their, of their, of their business model is really solid. They have a great base, great cash flow, and what they're doing is they're now going into adjacent adjacent markets in a way that's not threatening and it's not a frontal attack on the competition. They're changing the goalpost to use a football analogy. And that, to me, puts the competition potentially on its heels and changes the game a little bit. So I think it plays to their advantage. If I'm an investor, I look at that significantly. And again, the cloud is a great leverage, great operating leverage. So to me, we're going to unpack that. Again, the Cube is on the ground three days, so we're getting all the data. We're talking to everybody, uh, Dave. So let's get into it. This is the Cube, day three coverage, wall to wall. Uh, we'll be right back after the short break. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, live in Las Vegas for Knowledge15. Know15 is the hashtag. Join the conversation. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>